you know, all in all, the whole, the entirety of the package uh, as a rifle that maybe you're trying to think about dipping your feet into some sort of PRS or, or whatever, uh, so far, I could recommend it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Wade here as always. Today we have another bolt action rifle to tell you about. This is the Arrow Solace. Now, there's a lot of stuff going on with this and this is going to spawn a lot of other smaller video projects and tests and everything else as always. But this is the initial video of basically the breakdown. Uh, I have shot this just a few times to zero the optic that's on it, but uh, I'm not gonna talk about performance right now. It was fine, I'm just going to say that, but this that's not the point of this video. This is like an introduction video and talk about some of the tests we would like to perform in like the direction we're gonna go with this platform. So as I said, this is the Aero Solace. Those of you that may not know Aero Precision, they make ARs, uh, that's a pretty large company. They, they're a parent company that owns a couple other companies, more on that later, but they dip their fingers into or dip their toes into the bolt action world. A lot of people do know this, but some may not. So what they did was they came out with their own action and everything else, and so far, everything's looking pretty good, uh, especially at their price points. The whole point of this particular build, other than just wanting another rifle, was the fact that its price point, and I think off the top of my head, it was a little over $2,000. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. It was a price point precision match rifle. Now, with a sum total of sub $5,000 for an entire PRS package, because, you know, off the top of your head, you might be thinking like, oh my God, that's way too much for a rifle. But I would, I would urge you to go talk to some very competitive PRS shooters and see how much they have tied into their PRS rifles with their custom barrels and their much higher dollar optics and everything else. I have some of those and maybe we'll talk about them. If y'all want to see some of the more higher budget PRS style rifles we have, let us know in the comments. But the, the whole point of this one was, can we buy a factory PRS style rifle, put a lower cost optic on it and do some, do some real work with it? Like how well is it gonna shoot? How well is it gonna hold up? All these questions are gonna get answered at some point. But again, like a lot of these series are going to take a lot of time because we actually test the things that we're, you know, talking about testing and that takes time. We're all busy. So with all that said, there's a couple things that we're going to talk about after we run down through the specs. So be sure and stay tuned. At its core is a 26 inch, six millimeter Creedmoor. Again, me personally, if this was a hunting rifle, I would never buy this. I don't like chassis rifles. I don't like super long barrels for hunting rifles. Unless I was never going to pack it anywhere. There's always caveats to everything. So continue on. It is a one in seven and a half twist barrel, which is perfect for a six millimeter Creedmoor, especially one you're going to use for long range shooting. One thing to note already that I really like about this rifle is the fact that Aero Precision had the wherewithal to print in very bold, nice lettering, the caliber and the twist rate right here. And that's pretty common, but it's not always common. It's becoming more common nowadays, but it always hasn't been so. And I really like the fact that you can easily see that immediately. Kudos to them. We are threaded 5.8 by 24. Now for this project, I know like the PRS shooters are probably gonna be just throwing shit at their TVs right now or their uh, computers. We have a suppressor on it. I'm not a real PRS shooter. I just like to play around. I shoot all suppressed. But what I'm going to do is try out Arrow Precision's new suppressor as well. And that is the, I forget the name, the Lahar 30 suppressor. Which, you know, already looking at it, I can tell it's not, it's not probably not meant for maximum sound suppression. But it's going to be sound suppression nonetheless. So we're gonna run it. We're gonna see what we think about it. We are gonna compare it to other smaller similar suppressors on this platform to try and get an idea of what the recoil impulse is like and things of that nature. More on that later. Again, we need to send more rounds down range. 
This is Arrow's uh, chassis. I don't know if Arrow's making it or they're having someone else make it. I don't know. I haven't looked into it. So spare me the stuff in the comments, nerds. As far as I'm aware, Aero Precision makes this. It is night vision bridge, adaptable, capable, whatever the case may be. I think you already know it will end up getting one. We like to do that here. It does have QD cups on both sides and in multiple locations. Good job. Everybody else, get in line. Stop putting sling swivel studs and everything. It's stupid, outdated. Moving on, uh, I think it just came with a standard five round magazine. Obviously we had to add our own, uh, own magazine with the plus three from Warren Precision. We do have a uh, ambidextrous, I think I said that properly, mag release that is, works fine. Now, a lot of people will talk about the mag release and a lot of companies will talk about the mag release as being like some sort of selling point because it's ergonomic or it's, you know, easy to get to or it's smooth edges for hunting and everything else. I really don't never put that much thought into them other than the fact, do they work? And it works just fine. We have a trigger tech trigger. I don't know which one it is. I haven't even broke this down yet to see which one it is. Uh, it's probably prim trigger tech primary or whatever. But as you know, we are major fans of trigger tech here. Fantastic trigger, probably the best. We have uh, Aero Precision's own pistol grip here. I think it's a, a good pistol grip for this chassis uh, as far as getting a good purchase on your, on your hand, hand grip here. It's got a nice palm swell, as the nerds would say. We have an adjustable thumb rest. I guess that's a nice feature. I don't need it, whatever. We have a adjustable length of pull. It's shown here by these knobs. And we have adjustable comb height. And we, does not look like we have, uh, what would that be, cant on the butt pad? We don't have that adjustment that I can see. You may be able to lose some, some screws and get something going there. I haven't looked at it that close. I myself, it's not that big of a deal. Some people really like it. We have a pretty moderate recoil pad. Again, you know, the rifle's already pretty heavy. Get off me fly. So I'm not really that concerned with the recoil pad, but some people care about this stuff. I don't know, maybe man up a little bit. So we have a nice bag rider. Kudos, that's great. Uh, I really like that. Um, the Arrow Solace Action, which would be the next thing kind of on our list to go over. Arrow Solace Action comes with an integral 20 mm OA base. We have our side on this opposite side, we have our side boat release. That's that's pretty standard for most modern actions anyways. We have a 60 degree boat throw. We have a three lug. Fail. Real time here, folks. We have a, can you see that? We got you have a three lug bolt that can be swapped out to different bolt faces. That's money. All I want to know is do you have one for the six millimeter arc? Tw dual ejectors, pretty, if you really take a look at this at its core, if, if you come to me and was like, make me a, a very nice updated Ruger American bolt, this would probably be it. It has a lot of features that are very similar, which that's not a dig at Arrow. That's literally probably one of the best low cost uh, bolts manufactured. So why not? I don't know if they did, but if they did, why not copy that and just make it better? As a whole, the action, the smoothness of the bolt, it's whatever coated. I don't know the coatings, don't care. It's fancy and it's smooth. As a whole, it's, it's fairly smooth. You know, I don't, it's a bolt action. I don't have, I don't have any complaints. And that's typically a good thing with myself. So again, it's 60 degree bolt throw. It has a changeable uh, bolt face. Uh, obviously, so you can swap to different calibers, which a lot of bolt action manufacturers should be swapping that anyways, whatever. Very rem reminiscent of a Ruger American. Uh, but like a fancy rigor American, if you will. You know, all in all, the whole, the entirety of the package uh, as a rifle that maybe you're trying to think about dipping your feet into some sort of PRS or 
or whatever, uh, so far, I could recommend it. It has, it has a lot of features you'd be looking for in a chassis rifle. Uh, I will, like I said, this is not, it's too soon to say, but all I did was zero the scope and it shot a very nice group. We'll get into groups, velocities, and all that stuff once I've had a lot more time behind this rifle, which you'll be seeing very soon in reels and all that kind of crap. So let's talk about the optics package currently. Again, keeping up with the, the whole budget aspect, uh, right now I, just, I borrowed a scope from another rifle, and this is an older scope. Now it's fine, I could just leave it on there. It's Athlon, Athlon Ares ETR. Four and a half to 30 by 56. I've talked about these in the past. I like them. Are they my favorite? No. Is it a pretty salty optic? Sure. Uh, but I also don't know what they run for nowadays. I'm not from, I don't keep up with pricing, all that stuff. So it's not staying on here. You just got to borrow it for a little bit. Uh, what I'm looking for is for you guys in the comments to let me know what optic within the budget of, I'm gonna go ahead and say $1,500 and less. Keeping in mind, we are putting together a PRS rig, so I'm gonna want mill radian. I'm gonna want first focal plane. I'm gonna want something that's higher in magnification than a 10X. Like I want 18, 20, something like that. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think we should go with. I will say this, we are going to keep this mount. This is the Warren Precision Skyline, I don't know. It's Warren's precision mount that has aftermarket accessories. We have here our level already on it. And on this offside, we have a data card holder. Uh, it all mounts to the, the optic mount itself, which I really like that about Warren. I have quite a few of these. I have quite a few of Warren's uh, upper tier rings and everything else. They claim they are all made in USA and I haven't had any issues out of them myself. And I've been running them for quite some time. We, as you can tell, we run the Warren Aftermarket Magazine Extension, and this rifle will end up getting the Warren, the newest Warren bipod. Currently, right now, it's running an Atlas. Uh, while we're on that subject of the bipod, it does have a full 17-inch integral, integral, is that how you say that? Integrated. <laughs> it's machined into the chassis. Arca rail. Money. That's perfect. I don't I don't understand if you're gonna put out a chassis, why you would make it an aftermarket feature to have to buy an Arca rail when you could just machine it into it. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people are doing that anyways. But anyways, as far as the size of the mounts or the size, the, the base, the tube of the, the scope recommendation, doesn't matter, 30, 30 millimeter, 34, 35, whatever y'all recommend and the most amount of people recommend, I'll probably end up going with that optic. I have all the different sizes of these. So don't let that be some sort of hindrance in your decision. I am going to let y'all pick the optic uh, if y'all come up with good, good suggestions. So that's pretty much it. Uh, again, like I said, we're gonna go with the newest worn bipod. I don't, I don't have it in hand yet. To kind of complete the, the whole worn accoutrements package, uh, we'll take a look at the night vision bridge We'll take a look at your suggestions for the optics. Once we get the newest, the optic y'all choose onto the rifle, well, our next video we'll be talking about what kind of groups it shoots, velocities, etc. That's pretty much it for this one. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Be sure to check and make sure you haven't been unsubscribed. Be sure and go check out our sponsors. And I think you know who they are. We're in this weird phase where we don't know if we can talk about it or not. <laughs> so we appreciate everybody. Let us know in the comments what you think about the scope, what scope we should run, and we'll see you guys next time.